Lord is good. Lord is good. Father, we bless your holy name. Holy Spirit, it's time to give. I'm only a vessel. Use me only as a vessel. Let the voice be your voice. Speak to your people all now. Impact their lives. Change their circumstances. I give the praise and worship. In a man. Last week, we, we started a series on destiny. We started a series on destiny. And we talked about the dash, D A S H, the dash between the dead. The dash between the dead. And we talked about something. I give a story of my encounter with God about destiny, how the Lord reminded me that what matters in life is not about how long you live on earth. In fact, destiny. As we continue, we see that destiny is location specific. Destiny has a time limit. But it's not how long you live on earth, but how well. We talk about the dash, the dash here, which is in between the dates. When somebody dies, you have the first date, the dash, the last date. We know what the dash is. I mean, we know what the first day is, death of birth. We know what the last day is. That is when that person dies. But what is the dash? We try to explain to bring it to our understanding last week what the dash means. We said that the dash simply tells the story of your life. The dash shows how well you live at destiny, not how long you live on earth. To the untrained eyes, to those who are not spiritually minded, the dash tells how long you live on earth. But to those who are spiritually minded, who understand the things of the spirit, the dash is a story of destiny. Is how well you live on earth. How you are able to fulfill you are destiny. You need to understand that the, the richest place on earth is the cemetery, not the gold mine, not the oil field. No, the richest ground on earth is the cemetery. How? Because many untapped potentials are buried six feet deep. Men that were born to be engineers, lawyers, men that were born to be doctors, but they couldn't fulfill those destiny. Those that were born to be men and women of God, powerful for God, they could not fulfill those destinies. They are buried six feet deep in the cemeteries. So the richest place on earth is the cemetery because of many untapped potentials that are buried deep in there. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And we went to explain that there are three theories or schools of thought about destiny. The first one being, those people don't believe in destiny, they're nothing like destiny. They believe that God created man with a free will. In other words, they, whatever you do, whatever decision you take, is not guided by God. You reap the result. Okay? If you walk out there, drive recklessly and have an accident, that's not God's business, it's your fault. So they don't believe that there's destiny, you know what? They don't believe there's a, a plan, a higher plan for you. The second school of thought believes that yes, there's a mixture of free will and destiny, meaning that once you take the first step, destiny takes over. And then the third believes that there is a destiny, they might not want to call it destiny, we rather call it a higher plan. Shout hallelujah. That every child of God is born unto earth with a higher purpose 
for him or her. There's a higher purpose for you. Every child of God has something in you, what God has ordained you to fulfill on earth. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to continue from there in the next few minutes. But basically, what we're talking about this morning is that you are equipped for your call. Say, so equipped for your call. Equipped for your call. Ignore that title Equipped for your call. Equipped for your call. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say you are equipped for your call. But you don't get that. I am equipped for my call. I am equipped for my call. I am equipped for my destiny. The working definition this morning of destiny is that it's a preordained plan of God for you and it. Preordained plan of God for me, for you. As a working definition, we can operate from that premise. Preordained, that means it predates you. This plan had been in existence before you were born. It doesn't just happen after you were born, it had been there. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know what? This plan did not just happen after Jeremiah was born. It didn't just happen because God saw that there's something in Jeremiah. Jeremiah can preach, but Jeremiah can prophesy. No, the plan had always been there before Jeremiah was born. You know what? The plan of God for you predates your existence. Amen. 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 God doesn't just, after he's seen you that you can pray, when you decide to start praying, God says, okay, you know what? Let me make him a prayer warrior. No, no, no. You know, listen, because he has just seen you praying, you can pray now. God says, okay, you're going to become a prayer warrior. Or he sees that you are hospitable. You know, you can, you have your heart to, to help others. And then, then God says, you know what, okay, let me make her in charge of, uh, give her the gift of helping the poor. No, God doesn't operate like that. If he does, that mean that God did not know you before you were born. He is not coming to know you because he has seen what you are doing. No, God knew you. He formed you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he had already ordained you for a particular function, a particular purpose. You know what? The very reason why you are on earth had been given to you before you were born. Amen. So that is that, that the preordained. Well, look at that word preordained. It has been there. It predates your existence. Before you were formed, God gave you that plan. God gave you that purpose for existence. That is God. He doesn't make mistakes. That's why you sitting here this morning listening to me. And every other person listening to me, there's something in you. There's a plan. There's a higher purpose. God created you to fulfill that a purpose on earth. Amen. Amen. You are not happenstance. Amen. You are not a happenstance. Things don't just happen. As some people that don't believe in destiny think that things that happen to you they are by accident. No. Things are properly coordinated by God. Yes. If you follow the direction of God, yes. if you understand why you are on earth, yes. everything happens to you is coordinated yes. by God. Amen. And they are leading Amen. you to something higher. Yes. Even when you go through affliction, oh, I will let you understand as we go on that one of the easiest ways to get to a destiny is through affliction. Amen. The easiest route to your destiny is through affliction. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everything, nothing happens to you by accident. No, no temptation, no issue in your life is by accident. It is something that has been coordinated and all of it is leading you. If you understand the plan and purpose of God for your life, they are all leading you to a particular direction like the fulfillment of your destiny. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people understand this plan from the world. Some people. 
right from where they are born, they are some of the, the, the plan becomes so obvious in their life. If the others could see and begin to begin to understand, maybe this person is called to be a pastor, this person is called to be a mathematician, this person is called to be a teacher, this person is called to be this or that, uh, a musician, this person is called to because the, 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 the plan you can see very obvious, they can understand from the world, even you yourself, without being told, it, it's easy to understand. This is where God is leading me. And to some others, it's not that easy. They have to get to know through digging. Say digging. Yes. Need to continue digging. You know, continue shuffling things around. Continue to really listen to yourself and listen to God. To begin to know what God has for you. That's the truth. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. In all, every ordained plan of God is to serve mankind and in the process bring glory to God. Now listen. A plan will not be for God if it's not to serve mankind and bring glory to God. You know it, it's not going to be destiny. Every destiny, whatever God has put in you, the end result is to serve mankind and bring glory to God. Amen. Anything you are doing, it is not to serve mankind and bring glory to God. It's not a plan of God for you. Amen. Whether you're a teacher, a preacher, a pastor, you are walking out there Saving soul. You don't need to be in a church to bring people to Christ. You can be in a place of work and you can do a better job than a pastor. Yeah. That's why, because that is the plan. Yeah. Of God. Because when you bring somebody to pray, what happens? You are serving man, yeah. serving humanity, bringing glory to God. Shout out to the Lord. We talk about destiny. Most people think they have to be in the church. No. Mm -hmm. Most destinies are not in the church. That's right. Most. Not everybody is going to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is going to be an evangelist mm -hmm. in the church or to be called by those high sounding titles. Mm -hmm. You can do a better job on your own, outside, bringing people to Christ yes. than even those in the church. Mm -hmm. You can do a better job out there. There are people that are counselors, you don't even have a degree in counseling. But people come to you. You see people being drawn to you because you're able to look into their situation and begin to tell them about God. You begin, you begin, you begin to counsel them. Let them understand it's not over. This cannot be the end of your life. You can even do a better job than people with, uh, with PhD Amen. in counseling. Amen. Shout out hallelujah. 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 Why do God has the plan of God for you? Mm -hmm. That's the plan of God for you. He has to serve mankind. And bring glory to God. That is just the key thing to understand. If those two things don't come to play, then it's not a plan of God for you. Mm -hmm. It cannot be destiny from God. Destiny from God will not be for you to become a, a witch doctor. Mm -hmm. Destiny from God will not make you to become a rapist. Mm -hmm. Destiny from God will not make you to become a drug addict. Mm -hmm. He doesn't serve humanity, he does not bring glory to God. You have to understand that. That's the key principle. Some people say when things go wrong in the life, they say, oh, that's my destiny. Mm -hmm. What makes you have that kind of impression? You see, the destiny from God is to serve humankind and bring glory to God. Yeah. So, with a rapist, with a, a drug addict, we all be the murderer. This world serve mankind and bring glory to God. Then it can't be destiny from God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You have to understand. Because before you begin to understand, then you need to know that this destiny is to serve mankind and bring glory to God. And you need to dig deep. What is it? Look, let me tell something. Until you fulfill your destiny, you cannot be satisfied. That's right. Sure. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. There cannot be joy in you. You can have all the money. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. When you are destiny is not about how much money you have. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Do you understand? So people believe that once I have that money, I will do this for God. I will do this for God. I will do this for God. And you find out that the moment they get that money, mm -hmm. 
They do not matter for God. Mm -hmm. You don't need money to fulfill destiny. There are some destiny that are tied to money because God wants to use that for something. Yes. There are some destiny that are not tied to money at all. Mm -hmm. That means you don't need money to fulfill those destinies. Amen. We need to look inward. What is the plan of God for me? Until you figure out the plan of God for yourself, until you understand where God is leading you, you can never be happy. Amen. There cannot be joy in you Amen. until you do that which the Lord has called you to do. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Look, my sole purpose on earth is to do the will of my Father. Yes. Shout hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. I told my sister when we were, we were coming, I said, look, Growing up, I didn't plan to be a pastor. <laughs> Mine was to be a pillar of industry. I was journeying towards that from my university days. When I was, had the opportunity to study science, I said, no, I didn't want to. I was the best in my high school throughout. And my friends were like, science, you don't want to be a medical doctor? I said, no, I don't want to be a medical doctor. I want to be an accountant. They were like, are you crazy? I said, yeah, that's my call. I started doing that throughout. Started working in the bank, came to the US, long story short, from one thing to the next, until the time came in my life. But while I was going through this, I always found myself being drawn to the things of God. Amen. I didn't even know why. Even back home and here, even when I came to the US, I don't go to class. I, I, I don't know a club in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been here for 16 years. I don't know where they call a club. I've never entered a club. Yeah, I don't go to the bar no, no. in Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't know where the teachers are to go and drink. I was always drawn to the church. To the church. To the church. And they came to a point, I had the call of God. And then I went, oh, this is where God was leading me. Shout yeah. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe me, I told my wife, I said, look, there's no, there's no greater honor than to preach the gospel. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether in the church or outside the church, mm -hmm. yeah. this is my call. I owe nobody no apologies. Mm -hmm. I don't have to apologize to friends. Mm -hmm. yes. Why are you a pastor? They may call you names, but if you are called by God, yeah. Ignore the names. What do I bring for God would attract condemnation? Yes. Because people don't understand. Yes. Ah, people will not appreciate you. Yes. Why? Because they don't understand. Yes. They don't need to understand. Yes. They do not call you. Yes. They want to cause you understand. Yes. Shout yes. hallelujah. Yes. That is the way God works. Yes. yes. Amen. That is the way God works. Yes. Some people call me. How did you become a, a pastor? I didn't become myself. No, you think didn't. That I, I wanted to be a pastor. Uh -huh. That was why when I started church, people were, I told God, I said, Father, you want me to start a church? Look, I don't want to depend on people to pay rent on the church. <laughs> no. I don't know how to beg, bring tight, bring, I don't know how. I told God, I can't do it. Bless me so that if nobody should stop to pay the rent, I will pay the rent. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You need to figure out where do you belong. Mm. What's your call? Yes. Not knowing your call is like trying to go to the north by traveling south. Mm. Somebody said that. <laughs> you don't know what that means? Not knowing your call is like trying to go to the north by traveling south. <laughs> I mean, your like, like destination is there. So you are going this way. <laughs> Tell me how you're going to get there. No. How will you get there? No. I mean, if that's your destination, this way, but you are going this way. <laughs> I, 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 I'm still trying to figure out how you will get there by going this way. Mm -hmm. God will give you grace. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. That's what the kind of grace you need from God. The grace is first of all, Father, show me the direction of my call. Amen. Before you ask for grace. Hallelujah. Because what you are missing, you are missing. Yes. You need to redirect yourself. I've got to redirect you. Yes. Where do I go from here? Yes. What is my call? Yes. Amen. That's what we need. Yes. yes. Glory to God. And when you, when you are lost about your destiny, many roads can take you there. Mm -hmm. How? It's like going to DC. <coughs> you can take that in far. North, mm -hmm. 
You can take 77. You can even take 74. They will lead you to DC. But it will not be the same hours. Time. Time. Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We will come to that. We will come to that. Hallelujah. We will come to that. The Lord is faithful. Amen. So now, look at something here. That was Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You are not an accident. Mm -hmm. what, what is my destiny? What has God came for me? Now there's something. Mm. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16. Paul had an encounter with Jesus Christ. On his way to persecute the children of God. Remember Paul. Paul had a zeal for God, for Yahweh. But he had the wrong zeal. He directed the zeal the wrong way. He had a passion, passion for God. He directed it the wrong way. Until he had an encounter with God. You know what? God had already from day one formed him to go to the Gentiles and bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. That has been his call from the one. He didn't know it. He didn't know it. So he directed his energy, his zeal, the wrong way. He directed everything to fight the wrong battles. When you don't know your destiny, you are fighting the wrong battles. Amen. Yes. You are persecuting the people he was supposed to deliver. Can you imagine that? Why? Even though it's called. Some of the things that seem interesting to you might not actually be your call. Might lead you the wrong way. Until you had an encounter with Jesus. Say encounter. 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 Somebody will have an encounter with God today. Yes, yeah, somebody will have an encounter. Shall, and that encounter will transform your life. Amen. That encounter will redirect your steps. Yes. That encounter will lead you the right way. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to go to the south when you're supposed to go north. Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When you have an encounter with God, this morning, say, Go! Mm -hmm. For he is a chosen instrument of yes. mine to carry my name before the Gentiles yes. and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God. Glory to God. Oh my God. This is what Ananias asked him. The Lord said, This man I've heard about him, he's so notorious. He said, Go. Why? I mean, that God has chosen Saul, that even before he was born, to be. He said, He said, He was my chosen what? Instrument. Yes. Chosen. When? Even before it was born, yes. they didn't know the real destiny where to go. God has chosen you. Amen. You are an instrument in the hands of God. Amen. The odds left for you is to understand that. You are not here for the fun of it. You are not a happenstance. You are not an accident. Yes. No. They are purposefully created child of God Amen. with a mission, with a vision, mm -hmm. with a purpose. Yes. There's something about you that is so dear to God. Yes. You, have a, you, have, you have an assignment for God. Yes. Life is not all about getting money, living in a big house, driving a new car. No, 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 it goes beyond that. Amen. That's why you see many people with so much money being hooked on drugs, right. alcohol. Mm -hmm. Some of them cannot sleep at night, mm -hmm. even with so much money. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they missed a point, and that is their destiny. Yes. Many people think that money, fame, that's why Solomon said, what? Vanity upon vanity. Yes. All is what? Yes. If you don't understand that, look at the movie stars, for instance. Yes. Have you seen the movie stars? Have you heard about them? Many of them have married two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. <laughs> Many of them live in mansions that they cannot sleep without taking drugs. They can't perform the state without drugs. 
They, they, they can't even go to bed without taking sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. they, they need bodyguards to be able to even walk on the street. They are so scared something is about to go wrong. Why? Because they believe that it's all about fame and money. No. Somebody that makes $8 an hour, if you are being directed towards your destiny, you live a fulfilling life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to understand today, it's not about how much money you make. It's not about how famous you are. It's about fulfilling the call of God upon your life. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once about time, I want to quickly summarize as we wrap up. You decide how to fulfill this plan. That's key. Mm -hmm. As much as there is a plan and a higher plan for you, God will not force you to fulfill it. You understand that? You decide. First, you must accept. Secondly, you must decide how you will do it. Most of the time, God will show you the end, but He will not show you the middle. Oh, somebody does not understand me. Somebody does not understand me. Did you get that? I said, most of the time, God will show you your destiny, where you are going. But He will not show you how to get there. Yes. You know, how to get there is for you to figure out. Mm -hmm. You know, if God shows how to get there, you have lost the free will. God will not be the one thinking for you. No, you are a free will human being. You need to think, plan in the way you want. God will show you. This is my plan for you. But how do you get that? Amen. It shows you the end. But it will not show you the middle. The middle is where the problem is. The middle is where the attack space. The middle is where difficulties will come. The middle is where the enemy will fight you. The middle is where people will laugh at you. That is the middle. But how do you get there? The thing that God told the to Paul to go through all that he went through, the Philistines, uh, go everywhere, the Hebrew, the Roman, Ephesians, and all that. No, Paul decided how to approach the gospel. Of all the people, apostles, were the one that suffered the most. Of all the apostles, the disciples, he was the one that had the greatest impact. How many books has he written? Two third of the books in the New Testament are written by Paul. Two third. And there was somebody that he was not on earth. He didn't meet Jesus physically on earth. He didn't walk with Jesus on earth. But two third of the, of the, of the books in the New Testament are written by Paul. God did not tell him, go here, go there. He decided how. The very day God told him his call, how to accomplish it was left in his hands. The call, the important thing is not the call. Once you go to a call, how do you? Many chicken out because they look at the difficulties. Many chicken out because they look at the trouble they have to go through. Many chicken out because they listen to what people are saying. If I were to listen to what people are saying about me, I would not even preach this gospel. What name have they not called me? They call me four one man pastor. Yeah. This, that, that. Hmm. But that's the price I have to pay. Yeah. Every call comes with a price. Yes. Oh, shall yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You think that when the call of God upon your life, you not pay a price? You can't fulfill the call of God without a price. Amen. Why Satan will fight you? Yes. Satan doesn't want you to fulfill mm -hmm. that plan. Amen. Satan is standing as an arch enemy against that plan. Yes. He doesn't want something that will benefit mankind yes. and bring glory to God. Amen. He doesn't want God to be glorified in the works. Yes. So Satan will bring obstacles on your way. Yes. He will bring impediments. Yes. He will bring shame. Because he wants you to give up. Yes. And say, I will not give up. I will not give up. I really hear you say, I will not give up. I will not give up. No matter what, I will not give up.
make you to miss your destiny. We'll start there. Amen. Amen. Amen.